A few more things on motion tweens in this lesson. So it's not a matter of just changing one object into another. You can create multiple objects using multiple of your creation tools here and then move them all into um, another shape. So let's say we chose the rectangle tool here, right? And then we picked the oval tool. We change the colors around, right? And even if the oval tool is, I mean, even if the oval is in a different spot and not connected, you know, or we create a line here, or um, we strike through an object, like so. Um, we scribble, like so. It doesn't really matter how many different objects we're talking about. We, we can select them all and move them all over and shape them into, morph them into what we want. For instance, um, if I wanted to morph all that into just a baby little dot that was black, I could create a tiny little, actually, Let's make it black here, and I'll insert a keyframe at the end here. But with all that selected, I can delete it, and then make a little baby circle, like so. There. So we start out with all those complex objects, and if you happen to deselect them, like so, you may have to hold down Control, and you can either select individual parts, or you can just simply select the whole area, which is what's nice about these tools. Um, you could just choose the outline that you want to make changes to, like so. But in this case, we're going to move all of it, put it into a shape tween, and it's going to scrunch all that stuff. into a little dot, like so. Now here's the cool part about shape tweens, besides what's obvious in the morphing effect, is it will move, it acts as a motion tween as well. In other words, if I want an object to move as well as morph, I can do that all in the same shot. So in this case, let me clear out these frames real quick. Well, if you want to see that, by the way, in a the larger version, see them all scrunch into one little dot. Looks cool, huh? All right. Now, I'm going to clear these frames. Right-click over them once they're all selected. Clear frames, like so. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a straight line. for layer one that I'm going to roll a ball on. So then I'm going to create layer two. Now on layer two, let me zoom in a little bit. I'm going to make a nice round. Actually, let me do one more thing on layer one. I'm going to create another line that goes straight up like so. Now, go to layer 2, pick my object, and let's pick um, some colors out here, maybe a dark color with a light outline, maybe not quite that light. Let's go to that. And now I'm going to create my circle, hold down shift because I want a perfect one. Like so, and if I wanted it slightly above the line, oops, that's the problem. You got to select both the outline, hold down shift, as well as the circle. Now I can move it up slightly, like so. So it looks like it's resting on that line. So if I want to 
morph it into a square, but as well as move it forward over here, what I'm going to do is skip ahead to frame 30, which is where that same object is. I'm going to delete it. And, of course, it still exists here in frame 1. Oh, nope, I actually must have had it selected. All right, so... Ah, I didn't create a keyframe. That's the problem. So let's create a keyframe on both of these layers. Okay, now on frame 30, now I can delete that. And it still exists on frame 1. Okay. So now on frame 30, I want to create a square. But I want it to be about the same size as the circle. Now here's where I want to show you a cool tool within the timeline. So I want to create a square, but I'm not sure exactly how big it is. I want to match the same height as the circle, but the circle is way back here. And I can't start drawing here because I'm on the wrong frame. I'm on This is the frame I want to draw on. So how do I see that and still draw here? Aha! These are called onions. I guess because of their ide the idea of there being layers and being able to see beyond or through different layers of the onion. And those are down here. Onion skin, onion skin outlines, edit multiple frames, modify onion markers. So we're just going to simply deal with onion skin. And now when you create the onion skin, what it does is it creates these brackets. And this allows you to see back however many frames you want, a light outline, or basically a low alpha version of whatever was in these frames. So, I mean, we could pull it all the way back to the beginning, but being that that original object is carried forward through all the way to this frame, it's fine. But I'm, what I'm saying is you can adjust it to back how many frames you want. So that allows you to see what's in other frames, but still adjust only the frame you're in. This is very useful. Onions. You've got to remember onions. They smell bad, but they taste good. So, now I'm able to see the approximate size of my circle and I can now select the rectangle tool and if I want I can even pick the top here and wait till I get to the bottom like so which is pretty close I might still want to select all sides. Actually, I could have just drawn a box around this, but I think I want to free transform it just slightly smaller. So I'm going to hold the shift down. Slightly smaller. Let's see if that's enough. Like so. I think that's pretty good. Take the selection tool. Move it up slightly. See, it's not letting me move it up because the snap too is still. It's, this is an example of when you might need to um, remove some of the snap too. Ah, there I go, not cr selecting the whole thing again. Let me select the whole thing. Oops, see, but I gotta make sure I'm on layer two. Ah, there's my problem. Okay. I thought I put it on the wrong layer. So if I if I X out this layer so I don't see it. Okay, good. So I did put the box on the correct layer. But what I want to do is move it up slightly, like so. And by removing the snap to, it allows me to do that. Because remember, the snap to is looking for a, an edge, the grid, or some other object to snap it exactly to. And if it doesn't find that, it's going to force you to push it in a place you want. So anyway, I had to remove the snapping snap align. Now, that I'm on layer 2, at the end here, I want to move it, I'm going to unhide that, 
Now what I want to do is with with this box selected as well as the outline I want to move it to the right and I'm simply using my arrow keys to move it over. Now will I be able to get it perfectly in there? That looks pretty close. So now that it's where I want I'm going to create my I'm going to remove my onions so I don't have to see both see those brackets are removed now and now I am going to add my shape tween in between and let's see what we got look at that a ball that rolls into a square so let's look at it in movie form So you see how it's it's acting as a motion tween, but also a morphing tween, in the sense that it's moving the object where you want, but it morphing it at the same time. So it's pretty cool. Um, and remember, you can use any combination of things: squares overlapping, squares ovals overlapping, whatever. With all except the text tool, any of these combined, and then make sure that they're all selected, and they can all morph, even if they're not connected directly into whatever shape you have at the end or multiple shapes. So, anyway, have some fun with the motion tween. I'm sorry, not the motion tweens, the shape tweens, which can be used as motion tweens as well. Enjoy.